Hello and welcome to Legislative Report. I'm State Representative Jason Ortitai of the 46th District in Allegheny and Washington Counties. Thousands of local families are feeling the painful consequences of an addicted loved one. It can be difficult to find an effective treatment program that breaks the dependence on substances and heals the individual physically, mentally, and spiritually. Joining me today to discuss the Teen Challenge program is Joel Jakubowski, Director of Community Outreach for Teen Challenge in Lancaster. Joel, welcome to the program. Great to be here. Um, I'm, I'm very grateful for you being here today. You came to my office and you, you brought light on a new uh, program that I had no idea even existed. Uh, back home, I know that we have a little bit of a, of a drug problem going on and it's, it's getting more rampant. Sure. So I want to make sure these people are aware that the, there's a program out there. Fantastic. And I, I'm glad you're here. I want to kind of bring you in, introduce you, yes. uh, kind of tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, if you want to go right into your story after sure. that. Uh, well, my name is Joel Jakubowski. I am the director of Lancaster Teen Challenge, which is community outreach and referral. We are not a residential center of the Teen Challenge Centers. And I'm also the director of community outreach for the actual headquarters, which is the training center. Teen Challenge is set up in two phases. Um, first, we have induction centers where the individual, the candidate for our program would come for four months. We refer to our clients as students, um, and they would come into the four-month process. We have five centers in our division. We have two in New York, two in Pennsylvania, one in North Carolina, and we have one in Allegheny County in Cheswick. That is one of our oldest centers. It's, we're looking at about 25, 30 years there. And the student goes to that process, the four months, and learns everything really groundbreaking about how to make change from an addictive lifestyle, learning new coping mechanisms, uh, learning emotional regulation, and really just about every domain of life, relationally, socially, vocationally, on how to be equipped and to, to start making choices that bring about a prosperous and abundant outcome uh, that would, certainly was what the addiction was taking from them. Now, you were, you were also a graduate of this program. I am. You, you went through it. I, I did. Um, if, if you, I would love for you to tell your personal story. It, it is one of inspiration yeah. and, and success, and yeah. I, I want to share it with the viewers. Thanks so much. There. You know, it's still inspiring for me. It's been uh, 12 years, but I entered Teen Challenge in 2003. I was 37. It turns out the average age of Teen Challenge in most long-term residential programs is 37. And that's a common misnomer. It's it labeled is. teen challenge, yes, so we think you. it's all yeah. teenagers, but that's it really right. is it, through any age, basically. It is. We started primarily for teens in the 1950s when our founder went to Brooklyn, New York, and he started to speak to the gang members about how they could change their lives. Um, and what they soon found out is when they, they built, a, not built, but they, uh, they worked from a little house in Brooklyn that they rented, and then the, him and his staff would go onto the streets of Brooklyn and they would talk to these kids about how they can change their lives expecting that they would have a big response by teens to come in and learn more and, and gravitate back towards that center. What they discovered is the individuals really looking to get help were 37 and older, seemed to be about the average age. And they said, you know what, we're gonna have to develop a residential center and we're gonna have to cater to both adolescent and adult. And over time, it just seems that Teen Challenge more and more has adopted more of an adult um, uh, facilitation and primarily because that's the people really that are seeking the help, that are at a place where they're really willing to get the help. And so for me at 37, most of us that come into a program like Teen Challenge, long-term, residential, faith-based, we are basically um, probably at a place where we've been through other centers or other experiences of treatment and it just didn't stick. Um, a, a common understanding clinically about treatment is that, and it'll stand to reason, the longer a person is in the treatment process, the higher level of success. And so we have a lot of 30-day programs, and we certainly need them. But for many of us, what they do is really just kind of get the ball rolling. They start to open us up to the idea of being powerless to the addiction, learning that we have to start uh, taking the steps to overcome this thing and to get, a, get this thing corralled and start to work and take inventory of our lives. And Because and you had gone through a couple of the 30-day programs. I had. Uh, and an outpatient program. And I had bouts of sobriety. But the problem was is that in many of those situations, in those shorter term programs, it's really more a process of removal, removing the chemicals, removing the usage, removing the lifestyle, but there's really not a whole lot of replacement within the context of the actual treatment center. So once you exit the center, you go back into your own home environment in most cases, back to all those old triggers, old friends, they call it the people, places, and things, the nouns, yep. gotta watch out for the nouns, <laughs> and it draws us back in, and we never really get the replacement that, that the programs like AA and NA, which we need in our culture, are really trying to provide, but because there's such a distraction of all the old environments and friendships, and even the poor family dynamics that haven't changed, we gravitate back very quickly. So when you come into a long-term residential program like Teen Challenge, you're not just getting the removal, 
where we're removing the chemicals and getting you out of the environment. But then we begin to walk you through a process of replacement, returning a different set of values, a different set of coping skills, a different set, set of relational and personal understanding of self and others, really changing your windshield of kind of how you look through life and how you look at yourself, how you look at others, and realizing as we're a faith-based program, we believe that there's a plan for every person's life and that through this process, we start to help uh, uh, the students of our program determine what are my giftings, what are my passions, what are my talents, how, how can I be using these things to really bring about that abundant life that I'm seeing others are achieving. Right. And so for me, um, I grew up in Reading and um, uh, grew up in a home with a, a, a difficult marriage. My parents were going through a very difficult time. They soon were divorced. Um, my mother became very ill, and it really left me and my sister to fend for ourselves. And I think there was all kinds of emotional dysregulation, you know, in both of us on how to interpret the world, how to interpret parenting, can we trust? And we began to kind of parent each other. And somewhere along the line, uh, we ended up getting high with some older cousins. And we were, I was eight at the time, smoked marijuana for the first time at the age of eight, and soon discovered that when I smoked marijuana, one, it felt good. That's why most people use and keep using, because at first it feels good. And so all that emotional dysregulation, when I smoked marijuana, it stopped. And all the problems with my family and all the problems with my own disillusionment just went away. And so over time, that gravitated into smoking more marijuana. And then eventually, you start to slick that slope, and you start to normalize getting high like most of us do. And then we start to open up ourselves to the culture of more drugs. And so cocaine came into the scene. And so I started snorting cocaine. And then eventually that got old. I normalized that and somebody came into the party and they had crack cocaine. And they said it was much better, it felt better, right? That's the idea is we wanna feel better, or feel the most intensity I can. And I smoked crack and that was it for me. Once I smoked crack cocaine, it totally mastered me. The root word of addiction is really uh, comes from the Roman law. It's a Greek word that really means to be overcome or mastered, where, where a creditor is actually, uh, uh, the debtor is actually put under the mastery of his creditor by a court appointment. It's called an addiction. And boy, is it mastery. And so I found myself a full-blown crack addict, um, at one point living in a crack house uh, under the name J-Rock. You don't get to keep your name in addiction. Everything gets taken from you and began to experience that culture of addiction within the context of a crack house. Um, and was 30 pounds lighter than I am now. I was thousands of dollars in debt. I'd soured all of my relationships. And then finally, my father and the rest of my family gathered around me and did the best thing they could ever do and gave me some ultimatums. Because I was still you know, a little bit active in their lives, even in the context of some of that drug culture. How they, old were you at this yeah. point? Uh, when, that, when I really started entering into that drug culture and really making it a primary part of my life, early 20s, okay. yeah, it really became a primary sense of culture. The thing about addiction is very interesting is that it really becomes a subculture and that's what really keeps us. Larger society offers all the things that the subculture of addiction offers, status, intimacy, acceptance, self-acceptance. It's all in the culture of, of a crack house or the culture of drug addiction. And so when family and people are saying to us, hey, we want you to leave everything that keeps you safe, because they have a clear view that there's an incredible cost to it, where we and the per people in addiction really lose sight of it by way of delusion, denial. And so it takes our family to come in and say, listen, you might feel as though you're getting all those needs met, but the cost is enormous. Let's review your life. Look where you're living. Look at the condition of your life physically, emotionally, relationally, socially, vocationally. Right. And that's what my family did and said, Joel, you have to enter into a treatment process. We want you to enter a teen challenge. If you don't, we're going to have to detach and love. We can't be a part of the chaos of your addiction, but we will be a part of treatment and change. So when you went in, you, you went into the program at that point, you went through the program. I did. And you, I'm sure there weren't some easy moments in that oh, point in time. Not at all. Um, but you came out. Yes. And, you're and now you're part of the, you're, you're yes. part of the program and you've climbed yeah. up the ladder. So yeah. you, tell us a little bit about how you've yeah. kind of come through the program. You, you, you started working for a teen challenge and did. to get to where you are now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, at some point in the, in the process of Teen Challenge, I went from being externally motivated by all the conditions of family, my physical health, those things. And at some point, probably about a month or two in, I started to become internally motivated, which is the goal of Teen Challenge, is to help a person who's come in really just willing. That's how most people enter treatment. Nobody really comes in wanting. We come in willing, different degrees of willingness. And you were taken outside of your, your home I, environment. You went absolutely, somewhere else. Okay. Absolutely. I left, I left my home area. I went to Newark, New Jersey at that time. That was one of our induction centers our first four-month centers, 
and in that process soon learned what this whole teen challenge process was going to be about and like most of us you know it's a long and daunting trip through change and change is difficult good or bad it's all scary and and difficult because you're working on yourself and so a part of you wants to run back out the door but you don't know what to run to what am i going to run to back to this horrible process of change or i can stay and try to enter into this process of hope and and new discovery what do i have to lose and so i did Graduated Teen Challenge, felt led to go back to college. I was 38 years old, went back to college. My roommate uh, was a year older than me. His name was Chris. Chris was also a graduate of Teen Challenge. And I, of course, would remind Chris every day, Chris, you, sir, are the oldest man on campus. <laughs> he loved that. And, uh, and uh, got my counseling degree. Uh, knew when I left Teen Challenge, I was supposed to get it to come back to Teen Challenge to give back. 40% of our staff at Teen Challenge are graduates of the program, 40%. And that's enormously helpful to be able to relate to the clients of our program, the students of our program, because we've had the experiences. Uh, went back to Teen Challenge, became lead counselor over a short time, eventually was promoted to director of this Lancaster Center, and then promoted to director of the community outreach program. I just finished up my master's degree, which is just unbelievable after being a kid failing out of high school my whole life. Um, soon going to enter into my doctorate in August, September. Um, and boy, I'll tell you, the future just keeps getting great. I'm married, I own my, my own home. We have two sons, four dogs, you know. <laughs> and so there, so there is hope and freedom, as, you know, past addiction, there really is. And, and, I that's, think the, and that's the message that I really want to convey yeah. to the viewers, that you, you, you are one of the biggest success stories. Yes. And I want to promote that out there as much as possible. Absolutely. And I want people to know that there are programs out there that can Absolutely. help um, and people can feel free to reach out to my office and we'll make sure we get people out to, if right. they want to, get in touch with, with your organization Absolutely. as well. But thank you for joining us today. Yeah, I really pleasure. appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, that's all the time we have for today's program. I'm State Representative Jason Ortitai. If you need assistance with any state government matter, feel free to contact me at my local office. The address and number will be shown in just a moment on the screen. Thanks for watching and please join me next time for Legislative Report.